started with 500 on my way to a meal closed over 100 deals can't change us You want to ask yourself every single day, am I doing everything possible to reach that goal? Don't get too far of yourself. Stay in the moment, stay grounded, and continue to push every single day. Welcome to the Game Changer Podcast. I'm your host, Elijah Bryant, and we got a special guest with us today. We got the Black Land Guy. Dave, how you doing? Doing good, man. Appreciate it, man. Thank Welcome you. to the Game Changers, you know? So let's bring them back, right? Let's talk about your upbringing and where you're from. Yeah, man. So I'm born and raised Fort Smith, Arkansas. Um, that's where I'm from, Arkansas, for the most part, man. Mm -hmm. Played a little bit of college ball. Most of my family out there and uh, played at the Division One level at, in the SEC. And uh, was doing engineering and then transferred to a school in Texas. Uh, playing. All right. So let's bring them back a little bit more, <laughs> right? So, you know, do you have siblings? Yeah, man. I got three sisters. Um, and I have a twin sister. My older sister lives in Atlanta, Georgia, mm -hmm. and then my uh, other two sisters are in Arkansas. Okay. How was it? Are you the youngest? Uh, yeah, yeah. So me and my twin sister, we the youngest. Okay, so you said twin. Gotcha. So yeah, yeah. how it feel growing up with, you know, two sisters? Oh, uh, man, I say, man, it's definitely different, man. It's definitely a different dynamic, you know what I mean? Having all girls around me all the time for the most part, man. Uh, but... It's one of those things where like I have a bunch of, I have a big family, so I have cousins mm -hmm. and uncles. My grandparents had ten kids, so, uh, ten kids, so I have five uncles. Dang. So, <laughs> so we just big, a big family, big yeah. family, man. So yeah, so uh, the alpha mentality I got from my uncles for the most part, and my dad. So okay, so, yeah. did you have any hustles growing up? Yeah, man. In junior high, man, <laughs> I actually sold candy in uh, seventh grade. So like I just. Went to Walmart, got like mm -hmm. the big pack of Skittles, whatever, like the variety pack. Yeah. And went and just started hustling and selling it and stacked the dollars up. Yep. You know what I mean? So that that's, was. <laughs> that's how most people start, you know, the candy and high school, yep. uh, middle school, things like that. So, you know, did you go to college? Yeah, I went to college. Uh, I went to college uh, at the University of Arkansas, where I majored in engineering. I was on the football team as well, okay. a Division One SEC level. So, so yo. And then I transferred to another school in Texas, Abilene Christian University, where I did engineering as well and did football. So, gotcha. so, I, so after college, did you pursue football? Man, I had the chance, man. The Green Bay Packers was recruiting me. I had a few NFL teams looking at me, like I had tight end, but I was like, you know, I've been through a few injuries, tore my ACL, that's my elbow. So I was like, let me just, you know, get to the real life, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> so. so what you do after college? After college, I got in tech. Um, and moved to Fort Lauderdale, um, Pompano Beach, and that's where I essentially uh, started really like figuring out that real estate was one of my passions, and so mm -hmm. um, really just got into the to the motion of like, hey, look, let me stack my bread up from tech and really start learning more about real estate. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so you're doing tech right uh, in Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. Now, what gets you into real estate? Yeah, man, I, I would just say like once I, so my girlfriend at the time, her parents was living in Nashville, essentially. And so I would go mm -hmm. visit a lot. And this during the pandemic, 2020, 2021, I go out there, I started seeing like real estate booming, like new construction. I'm like, man, what's going on? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, let me get tapped in. So I moved from Fort Lauderdale to Nashville and just started tapping in with the real estate developers out there. And I was like, hey, let's get to it. So gotcha. So you went to like meetups? Meetups, meetups. I went to meetups. I went. I joined organizations. Um, there's a few organizations called Urban Land Institute. I joined there. Um, I also joined an organization called National Association of Home Builders. Joined mm -hmm. them and just started networking and talking to people and like, hey, look, what are y'all doing? What you building? What do you need? Most of them saying land. So I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, let me just tap in and be the plug for you. So that's where that's where the <laughs> it really started yeah. tying in. So. Gotcha, gotcha. So, are you still doing tech around this time, or yeah, that's because I know tech is a good job. Like, yeah, you know? tech. Yeah, I'm still doing tech at this time, and so, uh, but all my money was going into the real estate. Real estate. You know gotcha. what I mean? Because I seen there's you know there's guys out in Nashville that kind of look like me, and like they pushing Lambos, they pushing you know Rarys and stuff like. They like, what are you doing? real estate land, you know, and so I'm like, let me tap into it. So, mm. so yeah. So how'd you get your first deal? Yeah, man. So my first deal uh, actually was a house. It wasn't land. It was an OKC 
uh, we uh, this this couple um, they were going through a divorce mm -hmm. and uh, tapped in with them and uh, sold it to a, a flipper out there for 10k mm -hmm. um, and then after that I was like let me do land because it's a little bit easier I'm seeing bigger spreads uh, in my city like 30 mm -hmm. 40k uh, from that perspective so then went back to Nashville pulled pulled a list and then started just networking with more builders and got a deal out there for like a hundred flipped it for 150 so. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And made fifty yeah. K. So that was your first land deal. First land deal. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. How'd that feel? It's different. Seeing a fifty yeah. K check, you like, what's going on? What's this? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But it's real, so so yeah. So what happened after that? Like, did you start hiring at this time? Did you have a team? So I had a few VAs. Um I had a few VAs, but I had to like fire a few of them and rehire and then really put more time into training them. Um mm -hmm. so I had a few but they weren't really top quality, so I had to pivot and find some better ones. So Okay. You know, we talked a little bit before, you know, recording, right? And you was talking about markets. So how do you find the market? Man, uh I I would say just, you know, essentially just looking at Across the country, I see like I look at see like what new construction is going on in terms of like the permits being pulled. I look at all that you know the South. The past six years have been really really booming because people moving because of the cost of living. You know places like Texas and Tennessee and Florida, you know pay state income taxes and mm -hmm. uh, you work remote, make this money, and so a lot of people have been moving to the South. So I mean, the South that's pretty much what we do. And looking at the building permits, demographics data from different companies like yeah. you know so i i tell people this all the time a lot of people from new york is moving to florida a lot of people from california is moving to texas so you want to go where people is moving because that's the opportunity because that's where the development and the gentrification is happening right yeah. so now you know you got that first 50k check i know you're <laughs> feeling hyped up right yeah. so now like what was that next deal like? Yeah, the next deal, man, was just, uh, it took a few more months to get it, mm -hmm. but uh, it's, the first deal showed me that it was possible. So it put my hustler mode on and just like, keep going, keep going. And then we turned around and got another 20K deal where we mm -hmm. flipped it. Um, it was like North part of town uh, in Phil Lot. So just got a new contract, uh, had to pull up on the owner and mm -hmm. get a new contract and we had a double close on it. It made a quick 20 so so you actually like visit the lot seen the homeowner at the lot or yeah i mean you know like tennessee is like that real southern hospitality so like mm. if you text or call somebody they're gonna want to like see you face to face just to have that that energy of like okay this is a real person i'm not being you know messed over anything like that so gotcha. pulling up and just like hey this is what i do this is what we do and you know selling yourself so and that's what i really got from like being in tech too is like how to talk to just anybody, whether yeah. there's a, a, a just a normal person or even an executive. So like talking to people is something I just do natural. So, okay. So, is there any sales tips you could give the viewers? Uh, I would say, um, be yourself. Always ask people how they're doing. Um, do your research, right? If you can find somebody on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn before you even call them, if you know it's a really really good deal, do some research on them. Like you know, that's what a lot of the big deals that we do are. You know, where I live. Essentially, we do research on the owners just to figure out like what they like, what they don't like. And, mm. you know, being in tech sales in the past, we did it a lot. Like if we know he's going to try to close a big deal with a company, mm -hmm. we do research on, on the team members. Just be like, hey, this is what they like, what they don't. So yep. do your due diligence. Yeah. So now in terms of Dispo, how are you finding? Are you using builders, uh, realtors? Like how are you dispo -ing? Yeah, so Dispo would be just word of mouth, like just connecting with other builders. Uh, Instagram, Instagram is a, a hidden gem. LinkedIn, LinkedIn, man. Last year, I probably sent a thousand DMs, like no cap, like just, <laughs> just networking, like just like, hey, like, are you looking for land? Like just- So when you go to LinkedIn, what are you searching? I would just go to like any city, yeah. and then I would put like a uh, custom home builder, spec home builder, uh, land analyst if I'm looking for a national builder and just connect with them just boom 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 and then with my profile I just constantly like real estate so I'm caught mm -hmm. in the algorithm so like if they go on my page they just see real estate real estate real estate and um, they're like hey what's up what are you trying to do some some respond some don't that's yeah. cool it's just a numbers game at that point you mm -hmm. know what I mean so what about that uh, you know Instagram because you mentioned that as well 
Yeah, Instagram, I mean, I'm just, if I see a top builder, like somebody building a few houses or something like that, I'll just follow them, DM them, go to see who tagged them in pictures and stuff like that, follow them, and just network, just constantly just hitting DMs. Like, I mean, worst thing they can do is not respond or say no. Right. You know what I mean? I tell people that all the time. Yeah. So, are you in the development stages yet? Yeah, so uh, essentially, uh, you know, where I'm at right now is like we flipped a few deals and now we're in the phase of like doing new construction and um, I'm in the process of getting my general contractor license. And so uh, I have a, I have two lots underneath uh, that we I just bought one this week, a six figure uh, land deal that I bought off market. And then I have another one I'm partnered up with where it's going to be two houses uh, and we bought the land for like 200. They're going to be able to build each house for 250 300 and sell for 600 so it's 1.2 yeah. million dollar deal so wow so <laughs> that's dope so let's let's break this down a little bit because right? i want to get into that right so yeah. like how does this process even work how did you even get started with that yeah i mean um it, it, the first start step is just curiosity but then like once somebody exposed me to like how much they were making on the back end i was like okay let me tap in with this. Let me figure this out. So what I did was I got a mentor. I got a mentor that was part of this real estate uh, investment group in Tennessee. And mm -hmm. essentially he he had flipped like $5 million worth of uh, houses and he was getting into new construction as well. So he was like, hey, look, I got this land. I'm about to buy it, put some money into it. Let's work through this process together. So I was like, cool, put some money into it. Now at that point, uh, we got uh, some drawings. We had got it surveyed and then uh, got a site plan. Um, and luckily, the lot that we bought is right next to um, National Home Builder. They're about to build 150 houses. Mm. So, like, the comp's going to be stupid. Yeah. You, know I mean? you can't lose. And so, um, that's kind of, I got a mentor. You know, long story mm -hmm. short, I got a mentor and did my own research. Like, I took classes, um, got engaged with other people, like, asking questions. I got, I got friends I talk to all the time that are like, I got one dude I talk to, like, he actually work a tractor every day, like pulling mm -hmm. up dirt, you know what I'm saying? Doing the prep, the, you know, the early phases of new construction. So I'm always hearing different things like, okay, who can I call for this? Do you know a builder? Do you know a GC? Do you know yeah. this person? So mm -hmm. just networking and having a mentor. So. so like, you know, everybody that I know that is successful has a mentor, right? So why is mentorship important? <laughs> Uh, it saves you time and money. I mean, it gets you from point A to point B quicker. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you can waste a lot of time and drive yourself crazy trying to do something by yourself when somebody can say, hey, look, either, you know, pay me or like, you know, help me out, add value to me, whether mm -hmm. bringing deals or et cetera, whatever they need, and they can help you by helping them. You know what I mean? So mentorship is, it, it's, 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 it's life changing, man. You know what I'm saying? It can save you a lot of time and resources and money, so. Okay. So are you still doing tech now? Yeah, so I still do tech. Tech funds a lot of my internal resources and software. Mm -hmm. um, we <laughs> we do a we we flip land, but we also come across a lot of big deals. And so to get that data and that information, it sometimes costs a lot of money. So mm -hmm. my tech money, um, it 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 pretty much funds that side of it as well a little bit. So I still do tech a little bit um, from that perspective. So gotcha. And people have. Like a lot of my viewers, people that buy my program, they have a nine to five, yeah. but they want to get into this land flipping. So what is some advice you could give people that want to do the nine to five and land flip? Yeah, it's possible. That's the first thing. It's possible. You just got to figure out how you want to navigate it, whether you want to have a VA help you out, pay a VA you know, for their time, or maybe you want to just after work after after you get off at five o'clock get to it five to nine mm -hmm. you know what i mean um so there's a lot of different avenues, avenues to look at it but i would just say just um know your purpose know your why because it will be tough but mm -hmm. you can do it you know what i mean luckily i have a work from home job where i'm doing both right so i'm in my meetings once or twice a day doing my stuff and then mm -hmm. the rest of it's just and then going back to real back estate to land. Gotcha. <laughs> you know what what advice can you give somebody that it's 18, year old, 18 years old, they want to be an entrepreneur, they see two black kings killing it in land, and they want to do land too. What advice can you give them? I would just say, um, you know, tap in with Eli first of all, you know what I mean? Because he already got a lot of resources in place. But um, just essentially find a market. It could be, you know, 
real estate development is everywhere and the first phase of that is land you got to have land to build something on so somebody needs land in your market whether it's a skyscraper a single family home and you know whatever it is you just got to look at your market a little bit different and a little bit different lens and then tap in you know what i mean mm -hmm. so don't be afraid you know whether you're in virginia you know florida texas you know wisconsin like it doesn't matter somebody needs land <laughs> yeah they're they're building everywhere and like you said i like how you said that you could a skyscraper you know if you get the land of commercial if you could wholesale that these are big <laughs> checks they're out here too yeah. that's what i love about this game like you could come in this game like the last person i did a podcast with malik yeah. his first deal was a hundred k a hundred k land deal so that's crazy. they're out there y'all so you know what i'm gonna get into mindset right what made you or what made you want to become an entrepreneur yeah i just honestly made it go back to my upbringing my mom you know my mom worked in the factory for 18 years and mm -hmm. she was you know uh, just working every day from like 6 30 to 2 30 every day and never really got the experience like higher education or even just trying to pursue her dreams of like business and stuff like that so that was really my biggest why I was like hey i'm going to you know pursue a business and start and start something no matter what it is and so that's where my my true passion for entrepreneurship and i always just would see people that were successful they didn't work for nobody you know what i mean they had their own business and they were just figuring it out as they were going so gotcha what was your biggest deal I know I didn't get to ask you that. <laughs> the biggest deal we've done so far was the, 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 50K, the 50K deal. K. deal. Okay. But I will say this, we, you know, there is a part of our business where we do network with national home builders and we find off market land that's already entitled and already have the plot maps, maybe for like 100, 200 lots. That's something that we are desperately pursuing. That's the land. And the entitlements is already done? Entitlements already done, right? So How are you finding those? <laughs> Yeah, that 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 it's a little bit of luck. It's a little bit of just networking and being in the mm -hmm. right place at the right, right time. Mm -hmm. um, I had a mentor that uh, a little bit older than me, obviously, plugged mm -hmm. into the city, and he would constantly have people send him deals, like multi-million dollar deals, and he was like, "Hey, look, Dave, like I got this. You got somebody to buy it." Yeah. Because he didn't really want to. I'll be honest. He didn't want to hustle and find a buyer. So I'm like, man, mm -hmm. I get on LinkedIn. I get, I DM, I email, like whatever. You know what I mean? So. Um, I just have a plug where they just constantly send me stuff and then and when you get into that world of like big land deals like that people are going to like people you're going to start meeting people and people are going to say okay you 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 that guy that can maybe move something or give me at least mm -hmm. a meeting you know um about a month ago we had we had one of the biggest hedge funds in the country like on a zoom meeting talking about a deal mm -hmm. so <laughs> so it's, it's crazy because you know me building up my network with the content uh posting daily is bringing me a lot of deals a lot of opportunities i also was speaking on a hedge fund yeah. uh on zoom so that's by you know constantly posting uh content networking putting yourself out there going to meetups you know, you travel into Tampa. Yep. Now we connected. That's now right. we could possibly, you know, do business deals together. So that's what you got to do to make this happen, you know? Yeah. Now I'm, I'm with you and you just got to put yourself out there and just network. Network and worst thing somebody can say is no. Um, mm -hmm. And the best thing they can say, hey, look, I'm looking for this. Do you got it? You got it. Could be a million dollar deal. You know what I mean? I'll never forget it. I was on the phone with this uh this hard money lender he worked for this big company mm -hmm. and that same day they had just flipped some land for apartment they flipped it for three million they made three million a day Sheesh. and so like uh when you hear that you it, it yeah. motivates you <laughs> that shit wake you up <laughs> it wake you up man like you're like man okay and it's it's, it's it's different levels man and you just gotta just like you said network and like believe in yourself and add value like when you find out what somebody really needs mm -hmm. and wants you're able to come direct to them and be like okay i know what you want okay let me say it this way i know i'm gonna get you i know i'm gonna get me i know i'm gonna get your attention and, mm -hmm. I, and if i have it hey take a look at this and they might say yeah that's what we want you yep. know and that's just how you get to it so yep so what are your top three motivational inspirational books gotcha oh uh, i would say uh, the first one would have to be Think and Grow Rich, A Black Choice. Um, 
Mm, why uh, the black choice? Black choice. Uh, <laughs> uh, they have the they have an original one too. Uh, the, the Think and Grow Rich, the original one. And I read that one too, but the black one. I didn't read the black, black choice. choice. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, black choice, man. They have multiple different uh, black entrepreneurs that just different storylines. Like people, mm, one dude in there okay. was a golfer. He started golfing. He was like 35. Got to the PGA. Uh, stories about people way, way back in the days selling soap or something like that, becoming a millionaire, mm. like back in the forties. Like, crazy. <laughs> you know, what I mean? in the forties, selling soap and you become a millionaire. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. what? Word. So that one, and then the second one have to be uh, Blue Ocean Strategy. The author, my mind going blank on, but that one talks about like how to find, how to create or find a new niche in any business, right? Mm. In any industry. And blue ocean, the blue ocean uh, basically is means that it's no competition. The red ocean basically means that it's sharks out there is very saturated. Yeah. So, um, so what would you say is with the land? <laughs> <laughs> I think blue ocean for land would be like larger scale deals because people would be like scared to take on a bigger deal. Mm. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, because they see all these zeros behind, you know, these numbers. They're like, okay, yeah. I can't do it. But no, you can. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? You just got to think critically and put the puzzle together as a puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's a blue ocean is doing bigger land deals. And, um, and you, know. you know what's crazy? Uh, I went to InvestFest last year. Yeah. I forgot the billionaire's name, uh, the richest black man in the world. He was like, there's no difference between what I'm doing and what y'all doing. The only difference is, is more, di more zeros with what I'm doing. Exactly. So he was like, once you get over that fear of how much you can make, because your mind you don't believe that you can make that much. That's exactly. why you're not making that much. So that really put it into perspective. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So. Um, and then the third, the third one would have to be. Let me think. Ooh, the third one. Uh, think Road to Black Choice, Blue Ocean Strategy, and then uh, this one book. I forget the name of it, but it's a zoning book. And zoning right now in the country is one of those things where it's like. It's very important to land because essentially um, uh, value add in, in land with the zone is very important. So like mm -hmm. understanding zone is, is, is very important. I think a lot of counties, a lot of cities in the next 10, 15 years, they're going to have to change their zoning. Mm -hmm. like Austin just has some zoning changes. Um, Houston pretty much has no zoning. Yeah. So like um, I read that book and it, it really kind of flipped my switch on like, OK, you need to learn more about zoning. And so um, I forget the name of it, but it's a zoning book. So that's what's up. So. You know, where can the viewers follow you? Yeah, I'm on Instagram, the Black Land Guy. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I'm on Twitter. I'm on uh, TikTok, Black Land Guy. You can follow me there. Tap in with me. Um, so, yeah. And make sure y'all tap in with us. If you want to learn how to flip some land, you know where to come. Tap in. Game changer.